predators seek positions of power to help their manipulation game. Um, and, and then that begs the question, well, how can predators go unexposed for so long? And it's because they're so clever. So you see Jamie Lee Ross as a predator? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Sarah Dowie is quick to admit that she struggled to leave her relationship with Jamie Lee Ross despite its toxic nature. And when she did get out, Ross came back to haunt her. It was quite clear to me that if, that, uh, if I didn't play his game, he would look to destroy my career. Hence, <laughs> Hence we're in this position. Talking to us at her home in Invercargill, Dowie revealed some of the mind games that Ross played with her. A very dear friend of mine uh, committed suicide by walking into a train and it greatly affected me. Um, at the time, well to start with actually, um, Jamie Lee Ross was, was very kind about it um, and was very good to me when it first happened. But as time progressed and um, given I was still unhappy about it, um, he became very impatient. Um, it was almost like um, I was um, putting too much attention or focus on my friend who had died as opposed to Jamie Lee Ross. And um, he would often talk about uh, how Gary died and the situation and... That's your friend. Yes, and if we were having an argument, he would say things like, well, you wouldn't want to push me over the edge like Gary. Then there were the train emojis. Dowie said he'd text them when he was angry with her. It's just all part of those mind games that they play. You know, how, how do they pick up on these vulnerabilities and how do they use them against you? By early 2018, Dowie had managed to escape the relationship as best she could. I don't think it matters how intelligent or what your background is or um, who you are or your strength. Um, it can happen. However, the, the antidote is no contact. That is the antidote. The trick is, is when you finally see the relationship for what it is, get out and cut all contact. Now that's not su to suggest that that's easy, but the trick is to try and maintain no contact for as long as possible. And the more time that goes on, the easier it is to maintain it and get through it. Despite all the no contact talk, Dowie says she slipped up and contacted Ross a number of times. And once, in a fit of rage, she sent him a nasty text that she would later regret. It was an insulting text message. It was designed to be mean. The text described Ross as a narcissist and insulted his physical appearance. It ended with a suggestion that he deserved to die. Slightly woman scorned though, had a bit of a feel about it. Yeah, well, it was pretty well why not? Why not? Why shouldn't I be scorned after everything that has happened? Um, I woke up in the morning after sending that and felt pretty bad actually. Um, had you had a few drinks? Well, it was sent at one odd in the morning, so I haven't confirmed or denied that, but people can make up their own minds. And I um, yeah, woke up in the morning and felt really bad about it, actually, because I thought, look, notwithstanding that this is all done with and I don't like this man, we're still colleagues at the end of the day. And I thought, gosh, that's a bit unprofessional, uh, sending that. Um, I decided against apologising the day after because um, I just didn't want to re-engage with him. Um, a couple of, well, about a week later, 
um, he approached one of our whips and told him about the text message. I admitted it was unprofessional and advised the whip that I would send an apology, um, to which I did. I, I did it formally and via email. Uh, after that, a couple of days after that, um, Jamie Lee Ross re-engaged with me via text, um, wanting to strike up a friendship again, some sort of relationship, and advised me that he was over the text message. So this is August 2018, so two months yes. before the big blow up. Yeah. So what happened after you'd apologised for the text? Um, so I had very not... limited contact with him. And that, she thought, was the end of it. In fact, it was just the start. It was October 2018 when things in National began to unravel, and so too did Jamie Lee Ross. First, Ross is accused of leaking the then National Party leader Simon Bridges' travel expenses to the media. The evidence identified points to Jamie Lee Ross. Jamie Lee Ross responds by driving from Auckland to Wellington and holding a media conference in Parliament. Ross drops a bomb on his own party, claiming Bridges is corrupt. Simon is a flawed individual without a moral compass and without an un any underlying principles except power. He also reveals that three weeks ago he was marched into Paula Bennett's office and accused of harassing women, which he denies. So you're comfortable with all your behaviour around yes. women while you've been in Parliament, yes. consensual or non-consensual? Yes. A day later, Ross releases a recording of Bridges discussing a donation of $100,000 and lays a complaint with the police. He again denies bullying staff and inappropriate relationships with women. I am perfectly comfortable with all of my conduct uh, and I'm happy that what I'm doing now is the right thing as well. 24 hours later, here at Newsroom, we run the detailed accounts of four women who say they were abused by Ross. Two are female staff members who say they were badly bullied. Two more say they had affairs with Ross, including Sarah Dowie, although she is not named in the story. The following day, two more young women come forward to newsroom. Again, they claim the MP bullied them so badly they'd become unwell. That afternoon, Jamie Lee Ross goes on the radio. There are at least four women who are accusing you of harassment, bullying, sexual grooming, brutal sex. Have you apologised to any of them? What started as a week of Ross pouring pressure on bridges ended with a spotlight trained on Ross his bullying and his affairs. What the, about the other three? The other three? Um, as I said, I, I dispute many of the ways in which um, it has all been pieced together and written, but um, there are, there's still fact um, in there. It was the next night Ross was found walking near railway tracks. He'd sent a text to Dowie, a screenshot of the you deserve to die message she'd sent two months earlier. And he wrote, you get your wish. It never crossed my mind that he would do anything like that. Um, but obviously when he sent the text message, he decided to pick train tracks to wander on. Um, certainly not as deliberate as how Gary went about it. But um, I totally believe it was designed to hurt me and it was absolutely all about um, getting into my head and making sure that um, I connected the two, basically. So what did you do when you got that text message? Well, I was with friends at the time, and so I, of course, I told them about it, and interestingly, they turned around and they said, look, he's just playing you again, ignore it. And I said, well, if it is something serious, he's still a human being, perhaps I should alert somebody to it. So I discussed it with our chief of staff and he agreed that I should alert emergency services, so I did that. And then it was emergency services who advised me to 
continue to ring his phone and text his phone so that the police could track it and find his location. And that's how they found him? That's how they found him. And what did you go through during that episode? I mean, it was certainly upsetting to think that uh, somebody um, could be in danger, but equally I was suspicious because um, this is a guy that is incredibly, incredibly ruthless, um, incredibly calculated, uh, is known for being harsh and has always presented himself as somebody who's in control and quite frankly um, has very little sympathy for people who are suffering from mental health issues. To a developing story now and we've learned that MP Jamie Lee Ross has been admitted to mental health care. He was taken into Did a facility... Did you think it was just a stunt? I wouldn't like to go as far as that, but I certainly believe that he was using my text message as an excuse for an excuse to point to um, a breakdown which was his excuse for bad behaviour. And it was a hell of a way to get at you. Yeah, but I mean... As I said earlier, he promised to destroy me if I didn't play his game. So, off he went. Police are investigating a text message Rebel MP Jamie Lee Ross says he received from a female MP saying he deserved to die. Very soon after that complaint was laid, an exclusive story about the police investigation was on the news, along with an exclusive interview with none other than Jamie Lee Ross. Jamie Lee Ross says that text led to his nervous breakdown. Driving around his electorate, Jamie Lee Ross revisits the worst moment of his life. It was my children that stopped me from actually going through with hurting myself. Police have now confirmed they're investigating an abusive text message sent to Ross by an MP he had an affair with, telling him he deserved to die. Media coverage, according to Dowie, left people with the impression that Ross had received her nasty text just before he was found by police, when in fact she had sent it two months earlier and also that the text itself had been misinterpreted. From my perspective, um, if he was threatening to take his own life, is not what I said in my text message. Um, the way I see deserve to die was, you know, your actions of how you've treated women, of um, how you've treated your family is so bad. It's colloquial, right? That guy deserves to die because he was so bad. His actions were so disgusting. Um, that statement is very different to a um, go kill yourself. I'm not sure that the general public saw it like that and it certainly all exploded. Yes, it all exploded and um, I became the Scarlet Woman. So suddenly Dowie was named and shamed. Should you stand down while that investigation is ongoing? No, I am committed to representing the people of Invercargill just as I always have. While Jamie Lee Ross became a kind of poster boy for mental health issues, doing a podcast and multiple media interviews. On that night, I sent that National MP a copy of that message back where she'd told me to kill myself. I sent it back to her and I said, you get your wish. I firmly believe that he used my text message as an excuse for his bad behaviour and used it in the media. What do you mean? I, I think certainly that Jamie Lee was able to manipulate some people in the media and uh, certainly get his narrative across forcefully. And what was that narrative? I'm a victim. This, all of this that's going on is just a big attack on me. Um, 
it never happened despite you know nine women independently coming forward. So did he destroy your career? No because um, you know, I rebuilt myself. I, I walked through the firestorm. I showed up to work. I did my job well. He's nailed you, though, Sarah, hasn't he? Well, I mean, I mean, he, he, I have every um, suspicion that he was behind the initial complaint to police about my text message, and subsequently he filed a complaint himself. Now, if um, Jamie Lee hadn't have filed that complaint. Um, it's quite clear that that investigation would have never gone ahead. So. And named you and dragged you through That's right. the mud. That's right. That's right. Because I wouldn't play his game. Mm -hmm.